Well, hello, Anthony Sequera here again. This is part three of our series on multicast that we're doing here at stormwindlive.tv, especially for all of our great friends at the Cisco Learning Network. Well, let's jump right in and talk about the components of multicast. That's right. What are the particular components that make up one of our multicast networks? Let's take a look, folks. In a multicast network, we have the source. That's right. It is typically a host, a server-based system, right, that is sending out some kind of an exciting multicast feed. Being a huge Red Sox fan, I like to tune in and listen to all of the games via the MLB network. And sure enough, this is sent to me as a multicast stream, this audio broadcast of the exciting Boston Red Sox game. So this would be a source, this server that's sending out this multicast traffic. Now we've got to get it to resources, to clients out there, and that's another component you notice, multicast clients that want to listen, and they're not going to be on our local segment, all of those. So we need routers that understand multicast data transmissions, and they're going to be in between, inevitably, our multicast sources and our multicast clients. If we have multicast routers, we need a way to route multicast traffic from router to router. So we'll talk about a multicast routing protocol that we're going to use. And finally, clients need a way in which to signal that they want to participate, that they want to receive this multicast information. So we need some kind of a group management protocol. We need some way for client systems to be able to announce, hey, I want my MTV. I want my multicast feed. Now, the paradigm here for the multicast that we'll look at is again this server, and you can see I've brought in a server down in the lower left. It's sending out multicast traffic. And that really is an interesting paradigm that's used here. We think of things with multicast in reverse than we would with unicast. With unicast, we are obsessed with sending traffic to a particular destination. With our multicast model, we are obsessed with sending that away from a source. Very, very interesting. In fact, we call it the distribution tree. A tree is built between the router segments that radiates away from a source. And this distribution tree is how, in a loop-free manner, we hope, we can get the multicast traffic out to those particular segments that want to receive it. Those particular segments that want to receive it are those segments that have clients. There I represented a client in the top right. This client indicates to R4 using some kind of group management protocol that it wants to receive this particular multicast traffic feed. So we have this multicast radiating away from a source over a distribution tree, and then we have clients indicating that they want the particular feed. The particular routing protocol that we use for routing multicast is called Protocol Independent Multicast, or PIM. This is the protocol that I'll focus on in these videos. There are other protocols for routing multicast traffic. One famous one is Multicast OSPF, or MOSPF. Multicast OSPF is for multicast routing, but purely in an OSPF environment. Ooh, we don't want to be tied down to a particular underlying routing protocol to be able to do multicast routing. So that's one of the beauties of our protocol independent multicast. Remember we said that we need some kind of group management protocol in order to accommodate clients that want to hear the particular feed? Well, we handle that with Internet Group Management Protocol. Thanks to Internet Group Management Protocol, clients are able to indicate to their local Leaf router that they want to go ahead and access the multicast traffic. So these are the big players, folks. We've got our source 
sending the multicast feed, we've got clients that want to receive it, we've got routers in the middle, and they're running a multicast routing protocol. We'll focus on protocol independent multicast. And then we've got clients that want to receive all this great stuff, and they're using Internet Group Management Protocol, IGMP, most likely, in order to signal that they want to receive the feed. By the way, great news, folks. As you look at the future of TCP IP, we know we have IPv6, and we're going to be able to leverage everything we learn about PIM and IGMP in an IPv6 world. In IPv6, it's still PIM that we're going to use. Sure, there are some subtleties and differences in how it works, but once we master PIM for V4, we'll have absolutely no problem mastering the PIM for V6. IGMP gets a new name in IPv6. It's called the Multicast Listener Discovery Protocol, or MLD. Probably a better name, but guess what? Everything we learn about IGMP, we're going to be able to leverage with the renamed L MLD because it is almost identical. So we're going to study these hard and then leverage that in an IPv6 world. Well, thank you so much for joining me here in part three, where we're kind of setting the stage for our multicast drama and we're seeing the components that are going to be utilized in our multicast network. In our next video in this series, we'll get into some much more detail about protocol independent multicast, about this PIM protocol that our routers can use to make sure our multicast traffic makes it through to the clients in a loop-free manner in our network. Thanks so much for joining me at the CLN, and we'll see you in our next video in the series.